Hello. I am so happy to be able to do this video because I get so many questions regarding specific eye issues and does, we'll just say keto, boar, carnivore, does this way of eating resolve it, improve it, halt the progression, reverse it, heal it? Over and over, I get bombarded since people know I'm an eye doctor. What's the answer? So this is one of the things that I reply because here is a situation this person wrote, I have a dermal lipoma on my eyeball. Would carnivore diet help shrink this? Eye doctor says surgery. So in this kind of interesting, you, you really have to lift a lid way up to see these uh, dermal lipomas and they're not really cosmetically disfiguring because like I said, for the most part, you really have to look to the side and lift the lid up. Uh, but people are concerned about it. So here's the two scenarios when you have to think about for me to answer that question, would the carnivore diet help that lipoma? Okay. So number one, the patient has this condition and this wacky eye doctor says, hey, why don't you try this ancestral carnivore diet? And let me just check back with you in six months. Okay. Do you think the person's going to stop what they're eating, clean out their kitchen and start eating meat, seafood, eggs, let's say even maybe fruit and vegetable, but clear out everything that comes in a box, a bag, a bottle, or a jar, all their socialization, all their holiday events. Is this person going to listen to this very unusual uh, suggestion? So think about that scenario for me to be able to answer anybody's questions at me. The other thing that happens though, is this number two, where someone has had their other why that makes them cry, some significant issue where they have researched and come to this way of eating because of that. And then now all of a sudden, I have people reporting to me that, wow, you know what? I did it to reverse my severe arthritis and I can't believe it, but I went to the doctor and my prescription's better or my glaucoma. So what I'm going to do is show you, I'm, I'm going to do a, a few different things in this video, but I have taken through the past couple years, uh, the information that's coming in from things that are improving visual health wise or ocular disease wise. So this is one of the main things that I really try to fall back on as the reason why this works is we trust that our bodies are here to evolve and here to be healthy, but we do <laughs> have to give it the proper nutrition and remove all the toxic, poisonous, inflammatory foods. And that being said, you would say, well, I guess the, our bodies would heal anything and everything to a certain extent, depending on how long we've treated our body like a trash can, how severe the situation is, whether it's in our eyes or vision or somewhere else in our body. But we have to remember, it's going to take time to reverse, time to heal and if it's too far of a scarred, uh, debilitating end stage situation, there's a possibility that there's some cellular uh, issues there that are not going to regenerate. I don't know for sure of that, but let's just talk about going forward that mild to moderate situations and are they able to reverse? So... I would love for you all, thank you so much for joining, um, put comments about ocular visual changes that you've experienced, because I'm going to assume 
if most of you that follow me and know me are here through this, um, we'll just call it ancestral way of eating, carnivore, ketovore, uh, carnivore-ish, whatever you want to label yourself, but getting to the point of getting toxins and processed foods all out of our diet, sugars, grains, seed oils, processed foods, you know, we all know what we shouldn't be putting in here and what is really pretty addictive. And uh, a lot of us fall back into that. And um, it's, it's really important that we not continually keep going in that ditch because it sets us back. Remember those seed oils have a 680 day half-life. They are so inflammatory. They incorporate into all of our cells and if there's anything that I can impart on people is for, for a reason to not go in the ditch for a lot of other reasons though, too, but for just resetting all the way back to how long it takes to get that out of our bodies and how long it's going to take our bodies to really heal. So I'm going to start with this topic and this is very common, blepharitis, my bombing gland dysfunction and it all sort of correlates then into sty and chalazion and dry eye. And what I'm going to talk about for, for this one, I am going to give a little bit of a background. Most of the other ones, I'm just going to scoot through and show you what people have written in that has healed um, through their carnivore journey. Uh, but with blepharitis and meibomian gland dysfunction, it's a very uncomfortable, itching, burning, uh, irritated, red eyes. Um, so I want to give a little explanation here of, let me see if I can get, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you can see my cursor now, but so right here, this is a special photography showing these meibomian glands and you can see all of them running in the lower lid and it's in the upper lids also. It's a lot easier to photo the lower lid and showing them. So uh, there's normal lid. And then over here, I don't know, can somebody write over in the comments, can you see my uh, cursor on there? Um, over here, there is um, gland dropout where you can see there's, um, oh, even, you can see there's only half of the length of it, it should go all the way down in here. So um, I'm just kind of giving you the start of letting you know what happens with dry eye and blepharitis and um, all of these, uh, this family of uh, dis disorders that happens. Here's another picture, top is normal, middle is Hopefully we can reverse that problem there. And in the bottom, that is pretty sunk. We've pretty much obliterated those meibomian glands. And the reason that these meibomian glands are so important is they secrete out some oil. This outermost layer, okay, so no cursor. All right, so this outermost layer of be able to draw with this, I think. So right here, this is where the meibomian gland is important is because our tears have three layers. It's not just salty water. There's a mucus layer. There's a pretty um, significant aqueous water layer, but this really important outermost oil layer. So this is just showing you a cross section through tears. When those meibomian glands are clogged up, they are not um, able to secrete that oil. And this top picture is very healthy. And you see these white, I see if I can, you see, yeah, these right along here, in here, you can see a glistening, these little dots of where the um, little bit of oil is coming out. And over on the bottom, I'm going to show you right there. So each of those now is this cloudy, thickened sebum that is struggling to come out. 
and we'll go up to the top here. See that's nice. It's supposed to look kind of like olive oil right there and right there. A little droplet of sebum is coming out of each of those meibomian glands that I showed you that picture of before. And then in this situation, this is further uh, destructive meibomian issue. So what's going to happen here is this person is not going to have that nice oil layer on their tears. And then the issue is the tear evaporates quickly. That oil is there to try to hold on to um, keep the tear from evaporating. All right. So this is when it gets really bad. You can express, <laughs> I've expressed the, it can be like toothpaste. It gets so thick. There's a big problem here. And my contention is diet related. And it ends up showing up as these clogs can end up causing uh, styes, chalazion, or a big sore puffy lid, as you can see in these pictures. Um, and I'll show you, well, let me go back to, I'm gonna show you a video and this is an expression of those meibomian glands. You can see it's just a little paddle we put on the inner edge of the lid and press from the outside. And you can see how this thick stuff, remember it's supposed to flow like nice, um, you know, olive oil, clearish look to it. And we've got this very thickened, difficult um, stuff to get through there. So uh, let me pull this back up. And there is a procedure. This is kind of crazy. I will show you because I've done this before many times. Uh, it goes on the eye. This white cup kind of goes onto the eye like a contact lens. And then this top and this bottom are for the upper lid and lower lid. There's actually a front piece and a rear piece. It sandwiches the lid between it. It heats up and it pulsates and it's called Lipaflow. And, you know, here's the thing, what are we doing? We're, we're clearing out those glands, but are we getting to the root cause? And are we actually really helping this person and curing? And yes, we definitely do make them feel better, maybe for three to six months. And, and it gradually builds up and you know, it's kind of nice recurring income, but it's a very expensive procedure. It is not covered by insurance. So um, diet is the way to do it. So now what I'm going back to this picture is to say that um, when you have meibomian gland dysfunction, you can picture you then also have a dry eye issue because the tear is evaporating and um, you're getting dry spots, it gets to be scratchy and gritty. So now as a big positive to this story is I actually did have a patient about, I guess, four years ago. And he had come in, I'd say repetitively over a mm, three to four month period and had these recurring on the styes, irritated eyes, puffy red, like you saw in that picture, he was miserable. And he was at that kind of like wits end, like, all right, doc, what are we going to do? And I was like, well, could put you on a very um, low dose uh, doxycycline antibiotic, which has anti-inflammatory properties. It kind of works for a little bit, but I can't keep you on an antibiotic like that long term. And uh, I said, I know this sounds crazy, but you got to listen to me. Go home and do your research. <sighs> Go check out Instagram Carnivore Doctor. <laughs> and I said, I, I know this sounds crazy, but this is how I eat. And I'm telling you, there's a very good chance that this will help you. So off he goes and quarantine lockdown hits. And coming out of lockdown was when I actually announced my first Northeast meetup that I had. This was almost three years ago now, right? Two and a half years, three years ago. Um, here in my condo, we had eight people. And 
comes to the door. I opened the door. I had the list of who was coming and he goes, do you remember me? And I go, you look familiar, but refresh my memory. He goes, yeah, I was that patient. And you told me about this and my eyes are fabulous and I've dropped 40 pounds and I'm the same weight I was in high school and the, the guy literally hugged me and it was really great to actually <laughs> see somebody take to my <laughs> suggestion and that it works so, so very well. Um, so I will definitely tell you that whole mess of the meibomian glands and blepharitis and that swollen, sore, irritated thing is definitely a, an ability to uh, heal itself once all the trash is removed. All right. Now for this, we'll move right into dry eye since it's related, like I said, because you remember when we don't have that sebum, that oil coming out to be the nice outer layer of the tear, we have trouble with the tear film. Uh, there's two different things, both the recurrent corneal erosion, and um, that's when you have an actual abrasion from like severe dryness or from an injury, and it doesn't heal properly, and it keeps coming off, and it's very, very painful. Uh, let me put this up fully so we can see. Um, so this person um, said that they really were amazed at their recurrent erosion going away because that is such a very, very difficult situation that uh, is not something simple that we typically will just be able to uh, solve the person's problem. So I was really interested in seeing that uh, testimony. So like I said, this is all anecdotal. This is all testimony, but what else do we really have at this point? So now here's another one. This is regarding dry eyes. I decided to give up coffee for July because of course I encourage my group members to do that. Amazing, more changes than I expected. Only one week of bad side effects, whiter teeth, even levels of energy all day, fall asleep easier, year long diarrhea stopped. I still miss the morning ritual and the flavor, but the positive res results are hard to ignore. They're blaming me for the hard decision that they're going to have to have at the end of the month because I told them you give it up for a month and then you make the decision. I also want to report at 59 years old, my ophthalmologist said my eyes look great. My dry eyes are improving and no signs of macular degeneration, glaucoma or cataracts. And the doctor moved their follow up to two years instead of annually and told him to keep doing what they're doing. So that's, you know, to me, that testimony is pretty uh, spectacular. All right. So now what can we do in between the point where, like I said, these things sometimes take time. You're not going to reverse this on a dime here. So heat masks, because of the fact that when you warm that sebum up, that kind of thickened, uh, kind of clogged sort of oil that tries to get out when you heat it, it liquefies it a bit. So it's really, really good to apply heat. At, I say at least 20 minutes and twice a day. So I'm going to show you, um, I have, so I have that, um, mass that you're seeing right there. This heats up. These are, you can pull them off. Uh, you can move them for exact fit adjustable. This thing works really, really well. Uh, you heat this one up in the microwave and uh, put that on and it's a great way to keep that heat mass. Let me tell you, if I tell you to do 15 minutes of warm, hot compresses, nobody's going to go to their bathroom sink. You got to keep reheating it, twisting it on. It's running down your arm. Two minutes feels like 20 and if you get three in, it's probably a lot. So therein lies where I really try to talk people out of doing it that way and doing one of these. So uh, one of my favorites there is that middle one. And here, I'll show you. Uh, basically with a USB cube, right? And then you have a control and it's got 
three heat settings, three time settings, and just put this on. It stays warm. You can fall asleep with it at night. It's awesome. That one in particular in the middle, I, I lent mine out. I have this one. This one works well too, but I have links down below of all three of those. Um, the first one's a brooder mask. Um, and that one works well too. That's a uh, microwave and it does retain the heat for quite a while. Um, but so, so helpful as you are re resolving your blepharitis or dry eye issues. Um, I was trying to, at least with that scientific medical explanation, just get you to visualize. And I really, I go through all this with my patients. Um, and I always fell behind in my schedule, but it's all right. I feel it's so important to see what's going on and understand instead of the doctor rushing out and saying, do warm compresses twice a day. Now you kind of are understanding why and the purpose of it. And it typically makes people a lot more compliant. Okay, so let's move on to cataracts. Uh, so the lens that is in that picture on the left is sitting right behind, I'll see if I can get my little cursor here again. So here is the lens and it is immediately behind your pupil. And here's a front on view now on the right where you can see this yellowish, orangish, um, turning almost a little like brownish. This is a pretty significant cataract. And my point in showing uh, this is that we have to understand that, uh, like I said, I'm not so sure everything is completely reversible, uh, depending on the extent. Uh, if you're 75 and you've been eating garbage for 70 years, it's not going to be seven months of eating clean and getting rid of that cataract that's developed all over all those decades. Um, there are about, um, well, here, let me go to the next slide. So you can see um, over on that gentleman's right eye, so to our left, a pretty significant cataract. And he probably already had cataract surgery in his other eye. <laughs> um, and then over, let me see, I don't know why it looks kind of dark. So this eye, all right, you can see it here. So this is called cortical uh, spoking. So you can see it's only down at the like, let's say four o'clock to seven o'clock um, area where you see these what's called cortical spoking cataracts. But this person has pretty decent vision because the whole central area is not um, blocked. So I think that type of cataract for sure would be something that would halt the progression and potentially even um, recede some of that. Uh, it's, it's really glycation that happens in the lens. So let's go on. Okay. So now these are going to be some written in testimonies and I'm trying to keep it uh, organized to the category. So this person, Holly, Holly, I think you're on here. You're on here pretty often. I want to say hi to you. My cataracts have stopped growing. I don't think I'll, ever qualify with my insurance. So that's awesome. Let's hope we none of us qualify for having poor enough vision due to cataracts to qualify for cataract surgery. That'd be really, really cool. Um, and then let's see, Jen says, a friend found out she has a cataract one year after starting Carnivore. Is this common? Okay, so I'm gonna back up for a second to this picture and I'm going to say that everybody that I look at right around the age of 50 to 55 has some little starts of mild color change, mild opacity change, maybe one little spoke uh, of a cataract. And the majority of eye doctors at that point say nothing because we don't want to alarm them, I guess, or it's so minor and it's not doing anything to their vision and it'll probably take 10 years before it's an issue. So they don't say anything, but you could go carnivore and then you could come to me that next year for your eye exam. And I'm one 
who likes to educate you about everything that's going on in your eye. And I typically try to take pictures and I show you and I say, this is just little minor changes off to the periphery. It's not an issue, but it is the starts of cataracts. So I'm going to guess that that person did not develop cataracts. Coincidentally, cataracts are such a very long period of time developing entity. So um, that's, that's my answer to that one, Jen. All right. So, you know, the next biggie here, macular degeneration. And, you know, I have two whole separate videos about macular degeneration, and I put the link uh, down below so you can uh, get a really good full understanding and education about it. But um, that's such an important topic because it's so prevalent. So I'm going to go into testimonies that have been written into me. Macular degeneration injections went from every two weeks to every 10 weeks. So the more that the retinal specialist is spacing it apart is showing an improvement in the situation of your macula. So that's a great sign. Um, yesterday I went to the ophthalmologist and had an eye exam. The last time I had an eye exam, which was about 18 months ago, I was told that I had a small spot in one of my eyes. Looked like I might have the beginning of macular degeneration. So it was probably a drusen. Also had severe astigmatism in my left eye and I couldn't wear contacts anymore. I had to wear glasses because of my adrenal insufficiency. Today, that spot in my eye is gone. My astigmatism is gone and I'm back in contacts and my eyes are better now than they were two years ago. I'm super stoked. So awesome. Again, anecdotal <laughs> testimony, but what else do we really have to go by? I mean, when we really think about it, what are we able to do? We can't sequester people into a box and make sure they're only eating a certain way to decide whether that is exactly what is causing an improvement or not. It's just impossible to do that kind of study. So it's so great to at least have the community and people talking. And that's why I love the meetups. And, you know, I'm, I think I've been Don the meetup queen. Um, so um, if you haven't been to one, get to one. It's just amazing sharing experiences and journeys and stories. And this is what we have to go by because let me tell you, big pharma and big healthcare out there, they don't care about <laughs> you getting better and getting off medications. They don't. I hate to say it. So, all right, let's look at this one. Uh, I'm carnivore six months. Back four years ago, I had 20% retinopathy damage. And here, let me put this into full screen here. And all now all damage is gone, healed. I showed minor macular degeneration, like a couple of the Drews, and that's it. Type 1 di diabetic since the year 2000, 60 years old. Since my diagnosis, I've been on a low-carb diet like Atkins. I still acquired the issues on low-carb. However, it took carnivore to heal my eyes. My doctor could not believe it. See, it's, it's, you know, and these are all obviously just sent to me randomly uh, of personal stories. So this other one here back in 2019, my eye doctor told me it was developing MACD gen in one eye and didn't know any way of reversing it. Told me I would most likely develop in the other eye as well. I had just started a very low carb keto diet um, fewer than 20 total carbs, no grains, no seed oils, etc. a few months prior to this. A year later, when I returned, he said there was no sign of macular degeneration and my eyes looked very healthy. He showed me the picture he had taken of the inside of my eye, still have healthy diet and still eating the same way. Yeah, I wouldn't think that she would revert back after getting such a success, uh, successful report there. Uh, here's some more MACD gen. My wife cured her MACD degeneration. It was dry with carnivore diet, which amongst other means ditching the seed industrial oils. Her ophthalmologist was baffled, telling her to keep doing what she did. On another note, my husband lost his central vision due to MACD degeneration at the relative young age of 50. How I wish we had known about seed oils before he got so bad that he's now legally blind. 
Uh, all his ophthalmologist told him was that they didn't know what caused macular degeneration. Luck of the draw. My husband was raised on margarine and seed oils for eating and cooking. No butter or animal fats in sight. Such a shame. Many people are losing their sight to a preventable condi condition. Kudos to you for trying to get the message out to the public. Yeah, it's um, it's it's almost like uh, a, a mission to really get the truth out because it's just horrible to have people lose their vision. Now, the other the other issue though is they might not want to take to the diet. So. Dating back to both grandmothers who were born in the 19th century to present day, I'm the only female in the family who doesn't have any signs of M macular degeneration. Coincidentally, I have as much as possible avoided processed foods for the last 40 years. Yeah, so that person feels we're correct in what we're predicting causes it. So here we go. This is another um, testimony about... Um, a wet macular degeneration. And if you go down to the bottom part, the, um, <laughs> the person like remarkably just turned 77 years old and have had, um, not had any more injections over the next, uh, six visits and their vision, uh, improved all the way to 2025. All right. Floaters. Oh boy. Here we go with this one. So this is a huge topic because it's so common. And I'm going to go into this in great detail to really help people understand. But I'm going to go into great detail in an entire separate video because um, I want to do it justice. But, you know, if you've had floaters, you you can see the familiar site here. And I'm going to go on to tell you, I'll put my plug in here. So this is going to be the video that's coming out and it's going to be my first video of my new carnivore eye doctor channel. So if you haven't subscribed to that, there's a link down below. Um, I've decided to do that um, so that I can keep all of the ocular health, visual health um, separate. So people here who are really interested in keeping up with the eye information, just please go ahead and subscribe over there. I'm even going to do a couple fun ones like I'm drumming up. I've always loved optical illusions. So I thought it'd be really neat to do one with, um, with that. So, all right. Okay. So now here, here is what we're going to see as far as um, people's anecdotal stories here with their floaters. And it's partly that uh, everybody has different symptoms with their floaters. Uh, so, but this one says no floaters and astigmatism gone in one eye. Shocked when she told me, so she, assuming she's referring to her doctor, I don't see floater anymore, but my eye doctor says they're still there. Brain allows that. True. Uh, yeah. So they will, sometimes dissipate, break apart a little bit, or move out of your visual axis. Uh, this next one, Shelly Cronk says, after six months carnivore, I had a large island of floaters that messed with my vision and it just disappeared, which is great. Uh, Paula says, my husband has major floaters and been keto for a long time, but hasn't helped. Suggestions. Yeah, so part of that issue is, again, is your husband 60? Is he 70? Is he 50? Has he had five, six, seven decades of eating garbage? And how quickly are we expecting everything to magically disappear? Um, and, and we can't expect everything. So I just say, be consistent, hang in there and keep reading these testimonies of it uh, improving and helping other people and have faith it will for you too. All right, glaucoma. This is another one um, that I've had people reporting uh, improvements where they were a glaucoma suspect diagnosis, and that diagnosis was removed after they were carnivore for other reasons, of course, because me, crazy eye doctor, can't tell somebody who's just got like borderline pressure, yeah, why don't you go home and just uh, clean out everything and eat this way? It just, you... <laughs> And you guys all know, you understand. All right. So this person wrote arrested progression of open angle glaucoma. 
So totally just halted the progression of it, which is great. This other rates, my pressure went from what, 28 down to 16 with a carnivore diet and giving up coffee. <laughs> That's going to be a whole separate video too. Um, but without medication, so without taking their eye medication, their pressure dropped from 28 down to 16, which is amazing because 21, 22 is right around that cutoff where we're running a lot of other tests to figure out what's going on and uh, if you need medication. All right. Now, these are ones that are really just vision related that I put together. This person wrote, my eyesight got better on, on carnivore. Prescription change for the better, farsightedness. Vision improved. Passed my license renewal vision exam without the glasses. Uh, best night sight since ketogenic diet while I have macular di dystrophy. I feel better with night driving, less glare from lights. My close-up vision improves on carnivore. It instantly worsens when I have deviated. Well, there's great reason to stay on track, right? And here's some others. Again, wild surprise after five months of carnivore, farsightedness improved. Two years ago, I needed progressive lenses without glasses. I could only see about eight inches in front of me. Yesterday, realized I'm now able to read a book that's sitting in my lap. Crazy. Uh, let's see here. I know it seems strange, but just today I had to go get my prescription updated and the optometrist was shocked because my eyes are actually better. Totally unexpected. I've been carnivore keto for five months and have noticed improvement in my nearsightedness. Vision didn't seem right when I was wearing my glasses to drive. I reverted to an older pair that was weaker and they seemed fine. Can also see better from across the room without glasses at all. Yeah, I've heard this over and over. So that's um, definitely, I, I'm, I'm a believer in carnivore helping with uh, prescriptions. Vision was deteriorating rapidly when I was eating a standard atrocious diet, the SAD. I started eating all meat, supplementing with a lion's mane mushroom powder. It has been about a year and I no longer need glasses. And my eye doctor was stunned. Blood sugar returned to normal. Arthritis went away and lost a lot of weight and no longer pre-diabetic. Just amazing, right? Astigmatism in particular, I said to Doc, I didn't think astigmatism went away. And she smiled and said, yours did. And this is another really interesting story about um, someone who has a more, let's say a less common ocular diagnosis of presumed ocular histoplasmosis. But the gist of it is here eaten carnivore for about five years now with noticeable improvements in the health. In the beginning was seeing the retinal specialist every four to six months for leakages. It was in my thirties. I was given the diagnosis and basically refused laser treatment in my left eye. I don't know why I just didn't like the idea had always been a chronic dieter and noticed I had less leaks on the diet. Of course, diets restricted sugar anyway, can figure out the rest. I see the retinal specialist only on a will call basis, have no leaking activity in either eye, and I'm getting more clarity in the left center vision. So again, here we go. Um, carnivore is helping somebody regain sight and 60 years old. So that's pretty amazing. And then he's wrote, PS, there are a whole lot more things that corrected, but he left this discussion to write just about his eyes. All right, so here is this new Carnivore Eye Doctor channel that I um, decided to start. So um, that'd be great if you subscribed and I will uh, start putting up some specific eye topics over there. And I'd love if you wrote in the notes uh, what you're interested in seeing. And this is going to be the first video um, about eye floaters, like I said, and I hope that it will be really helpful because so many people ask about it. And again, just like the discussion that I went through with the, um, my bombing glands and the extensive <laughs> description of the tear film and all, I think it's really powerful to understand what's going on instead of just questioning and, um, not knowing. And, you know, we're always better being educated and trying to, cause we know we can't rely on the, 
the medical establishment to get the right answers all the time. So, all right, I'm going to go look over in the chat. You guys are so great for um, joining me here. I'm so happy that uh, you are able to write in and give me some ideas for the uh, vision and ocular health uh, videos that you might want. Uh, let's see if anybody has every carnivore should make their own YouTube channel to show their healing process. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, thought, Jennifer. Uh, put all the carnivore in the title so everyone can find it. You know, it's, um, it's really what we have to go by now is just knowing that uh, there, there is evidence, there's not going to be hard scientific studies that are going to show the absolute answer. So um, we have to be our own N equals one part of this and hopefully spread the word and get the word out just through leading by example and having others see the health that's happening and the reversal of disease. And, you know, it really comes down to um, having the support in the community of being able to talk. And that's one of the reasons I, I love the, uh, the community that is developing here that some of you join me each week, which is awesome. I am uh, going to just because I would love to go through and be able to answer all the questions. Um, I will be throwing in still a Q and a night, which I really enjoy doing. And if you all do like that, sometimes I'm wondering, well, or is that something interesting? Somebody will click on and watch the video of, but um, if you all appreciate the, that kind of thing, then um, that would be great. And I guess there'll be some way where I can have some of you who are in support of the channel be able to have your uh, questions flagged. So I'll be able to get to as many as I can, but definitely um, those who are members. If you go if we go to your practice in New Jersey, could you tell us custom situation based on our own eye exam? I want to speed up my healing. If we go to your practice in New Jersey, could you tell us custom situation? Um, well, I mean, if you, if you come to my practice and I do your eye exam, then I, I uh, pretty much will tell you my opinion on your situation, but to speed up the healing, you know, we're at the mercy of your body and what you're uh, letting in versus keeping out and making sure that we all have to say, you know what, we have to be patient. This is not going to happen um, really super quickly. And I think that we have to um, make sure that we are not having our expectations too high, but having faith that, like I said at the beginning, our bodies do want to heal. So I just put the little scroll on the bottom. If you haven't yet, subscribe, like, comment, all these things evidently help and um, give me support. So until next week, um, I hope you all have a very, very meaty week planned and stay out of those seed oils and processed foods and keep the situation steady where we will not develop macular degeneration. We won't develop glaucoma and we are not going to be headed for trouble with cataracts. So thanks for joining and see you next week.